Now, Joe, obviously you have an insight uh, in terms of that you were a student in LIT, you know the Clare Limerick rivalry, but from a, a neutral perspective, how strong is it? Yeah, it's it's obviously very close, they're on the border of each other there and um, a lot of these guys have went to college over the past number of years and obviously went to school together even in art school reach and stuff like that and even Niall Moran has taught a, a mm. good couple of the guys so it, it's interesting enough and uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be very tactical you know these guys know each other inside out so it's whoever brings something new I suppose to to the game um, I know obviously working with with Davy in, in LIT he'll he'll relish the underdog tag for Clare anyway and uh, get them really riled up for for the game and you know there's a lot of hype down in Limerick after the Munster final and you know that might work with them or it could work against them you know they're there's a there's a lot of talk from coming from Limerick now. There's a song even out even the it other is. day, so yeah. it's 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 kind of tempting faith. I think a small bit maybe you know. You know all the excitement we saw, Michael, when when Limerick beat Tipperary and then they won the Munster Championship. There was this outpouring of love and affection on the grounds, and we all uh, loved it. How difficult then is it for John Allen to keep everybody calm, focused? Very, very very difficult, Marty. There's no doubt about it. They're the Munster champions. You know they haven't been Munster champions in a long time and. You know, but he should remember there's very little between the teams. I think they've met five times in the championship since '96. It's three-two in, in in Limerick's favour. But you know, I think it's going to be a cracking game. Uh, Clare have a lovely style of holding. It actually, the Clare style of holding suits the Clare team. They they carry the ball out of defence. They work very very hard. Th they there are contrasting styles between them, aren't there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Clare's give us give us an insight into Clare, that. Well, Clare, Clare's game plan is they try and walk the ball up the field. They try and create position, play, play the ball to the man running off the shoulder, and then they'll try and pull the Limerick backs all over the place and try and create space inside. And that doesn't lend to scoring too many goals. Mm -hmm. But people should remember that you know every three points is a goal in itself. So that will be their style. I suppose Limerick will be more more blood and guts and passion. Limerick hurling, they have a very physical edge to their team. But it's, go it's going to be two very contrasting styles and I think it's going to be a serious battle. Liam, uh, you know, there's a lot of hype in Limerick. Less hype, I have to say, in Clare at the moment. But there's huge emphasis by the Clare management to play things down. They have nine of the Clare under-21s in, in, the, in the starting 26. Is that a disadvantage or an advantage, do you think? That's an advantage because they're they're hurling week in week out and they've had a few you know an extra game there those twenty ones who played in that Munster final that's that's an extra game that's extra championship action and you know we played whatever five games this year compared to some people's two or whatever you mm. know so compared to Limerick's two I suppose and, and we certainly felt it you know it was an advantage so so does that maybe clear trying to you know play things down they have in which is you know in my opinion is the advantage of momentum and and much more regular games you know they've youth on their side. As well as that, you know, Limerick have played both their games. They played outside the Gaelic grounds. The Gaelic yes, grounds. No. They haven't, yeah. So I know we played them in March this year. So they've played in Croke Park at least this year. But you know, there's going to be a, you know a much different atmosphere there now than there has been in months or so far. Uh, you know, Davy fits well. You've been inside in the dressing room with him. What would he be saying to his team, and in, in the sense of emphasising the fact that they are underdogs, or will it be the siege mentality? Yeah, it probably will be. Probably be telling them that everybody's writing them off and stuff like that. And and but then again, you you, you see guys writing in the paper that Claire will be around for the next ten years, you know. And that doesn't really help either. It, it puts extra pressure. But it'll be interesting to see how they'll deal with uh, Tony Kelly. Limerick will Wayne Mack follow him, or or who will go with him? Because Tony likes to go wherever he wants, and and Podge Collins then comes out around center forward. So. Tactically, it's going to be interesting to see will Limerick hold their defensive six in in place, or or will they let Tony Kelly? Because I remember when we played them, Tony Kelly was sitting right in front of me at one stage, you know, and, yeah. and that was in the full back line. So it, it it'll be interesting to see do they play as defensive or will they go a bit more attacking against against the Limerick backs? And having had that experience against Clare Joe, what do you think the Limerick game plan should be? Well. To, to be honest, they kind of play the same same thing. Seamus Hickey comes from wing forward and he, he gathers ball in the half back line. He helps out the backs a lot, and and Declan Hannan doesn't actually stay full forward. He kind of comes out a bit and, and leaves Graham and, and Shawnee inside. And if if the, if the two boys get goals or get space to be goals on, because Graham Mulcahy is one of the fastest men in 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 Ireland that in Ireland anyway at this stage, and if he gets space and and gets a few balls in in front of him. They, they could get a few goals and you know as I was chatting Michael earlier on he said it's very hard for Clare to come back if, if they're not in the lead early on with the style they play you know. 
Let me ask you this, Liam, because Clare have come the scenic route through the qualifiers. They've had five championship games. Limerick have had two. But they've had a gap like what you had uh, after winning Leinster Championship. Advantage Clare or advantage Limerick? Are they, is Clare going to be battle-weary or Limerick going to be fresh? Uh, well, uh, they certainly won't be battle-weary, not with nine or twenty ones in their team. You know, they're, they're looking for more and more action. But, you know, it's, it almost... Is a, is a non equation if you get me. Like I mean, mm. it'll go, I mean, if they both perform the day, I don't think it'll matter. I think it's going to be one of the closest games we've seen all year. But then again, if Clare come out and they look, you know, battle hardened and Limerick are caught cold for the first 10, 15 minutes, everyone will be saying, "Oh well, it was the five week break." So, and, you know, you can't win either way. It depends on the team. You saw Kilkenny and Brian Coney managed it for how many years with the five week break, and they got into how many All Ireland finals, and it seemed to keep them fresh. But then others again are constantly blaming, constantly blaming the five weeks. We thought we didn't notice too much of a problem with it. You know, yeah. once you keep things fresh in training uh, and make sure that you know you're giving it, you're giving it your all. Personally, I would have liked a game in between. Yes. Because look, there's nothing like championship action to get you up to that intensity, that pitch. So I would say it's advantage slightly to Clare anyway. As well as that, actually, on Tony Kelly, you might see Seamus Hickey. They might just drop Seamus Hickey back out, and sure then you'll have two centre forwards marking each it's other around midfield. It's going to be crowded, I think, so in midfield. Yeah, no, I think it's so. be Guys, we're coming to the to the vital moment. Who's going to win this match, Clare Limerick? In a word, you know, in a word, uh, I'd have to say it could even be a draw, but I'd say Limerick. At, maybe after a point by Hawkeye. Michael Ryan goes for <laughs> goes for Limerick. <laughs> Thanks for that, Michael. Joe Canning. Uh, Limerick. Limerick. That's two for Limerick. Oh, I'll have to side with Clare. So yeah, absolutely. That's the Clare mother influence there.